we are with Stars Without Number Revised, Black Star, the Season 1 recap of the Faction Turns. It is I, Devin, and to my right, we have... Peter. So, listeners, Peter and I, and a lot of the work and credit should go to Peter, because he's the one doing the sheets and a lot of the math, are doing Faction Turns for Black Star. Uh, Peter has taken the liberty of putting together a few... Uh, I think the first seven turns we're doing. Yeah, yeah, seven turns. Yeah. Uh, just as we going on in the background, I know season one just wrapped up from your perspective, so we held off on doing faction turns and Sons of Gold and a lot of other in-depth mechanics because we wanted to get the, the basic revised experience. And now that we have through season one, we're retroactively doing the faction turns now to start to get into that because we want that to be a facet of the game. We've already recorded some uh, aspects of Season 2, you might not have, uh, that you'll be hearing after this episode comes out, and the faction turns we've done have actually influenced those episodes and provided story fodder. As if you're familiar with Sign Nomine and Stars of Numbers and Kevin Crawford and Godbound, literally every part of the book is in some way built to provide story fodder. So, uh, I will pass it over to Peter, and he will talk to us about what's happening in the Elder Guard uh, sector, the little top left corner we're currently occupying. Yeah. So, I guess we'll just start with the factions we have, because not everything is simulated there, so we decided to cut it down to a few more interesting factions and a few enemies for them, the most immediate stuff. So, we started with the Praetorian Republic, which is one of the bigger factions in our game, which, you know, I guess is the starting point for us. Both of our characters are from the Praetorian Republic. The Praetorian Republic is a fascist space government uh, that currently is situated on one planet, but now has a invested interest in the second. Um, if you check the Black Star sector sheet, you'll see where it is. Um, it's based off Starship Troopers' Rome culture. Yep. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of like that. And yeah, we'll start there with the... Uh... Next ones. Um, after that, we've got the 100 Star Empire, represented by their Eden branch. Yes, the 100 Star Empire is a multi-sector uh, empire, and the, the Eden uh, parts of it have basically set up a shop here, so it's like a, it's like a little small copy of that larger faction that's growing and will eventually spread here and gets... Uh, intermittent uh, resource uh, drops from the core empire. So we're not statting up as if it's this big, huge organization with unlimited resources. It's a small copy of it that's growing here. Yeah. Then we've got the Cult of Jolius. The Cult of Jolius are the worshippers who live on Solarius. So they're the clown priests that you're familiar with who mine element X from their medieval world. Uh, they're hedonists. Yep. They're the, and oligarchs. Yeah, they're the second big faction out there, although they don't have much technology at the start, at least. And that's how they like it. Yep. Then we've got Ayun. Or at least, that's what we're calling we'll call them for now? Yes, Ayun is... Yeah, the Ayun Military Consortium. Ah. So, whereas um, the Praetorian Republic is a very propaganda and ideologue and fanatical organization, uh, Ayun is built around the military-industrial complex. Military for them is profit, whereas for the Praetorian Republic, military conquest is a way of life and a way of enriching their culture. Okay. Ayun came from a Ayun's uh, like background basically because they're remnants of the mandate. Uh, they've commoditized and privatized military and war, and it's their main source of like enriching their their ways of life yep so they're more corporate than they are you know fanatics yep then we've got the nvidia pirates yeah the nvidia pirates are the anti the anti-priest uh pirates they're a faction of raiders that were harbored by um the planet nvidia who that is in the same sector as solarius they were fostered, given technology, resources, money, and they were basically built to attack and, and ravage Solarius and ruin their trade. Because the priests of NVIDIA are spiteful and immortal. Yep. Then we have the 
Jotunheim rebels, which I don't think we need to give them a name because Re the, they were rebels. Spoiler alert, they will disappear eventually. Yeah, they were rebels. Yeah. So yeah, based on Jotunheim, they've got their holy war with Ayun, and yeah. Hacking freaking rocks at them. Yeah, hacking rocks forever. So yeah, they've got um, the Cult of the Fading Sons, which is a little faction that I decided to put on myself. They're technically um, on some planet that's not really discovered in the sector really yet, so they're their own little thing, insular at the moment. And their shtick is that they're doomsday cultists. They want to infiltrate the sector, they want to, you know, ravage, destroy, and, you know, do it year after year, just keep coming back and making everybody else's life miserable because they believe their world is ending. Roughly like that. Mm -hmm. Heavily inspired by the Fading Suns, the RPG system, the everything. The setting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually a board game. It's a video game series, too. Oh, yeah. I think the video game came first. Yeah, I think it was the video game. That maybe they even had some miniatures or something? Oh, yeah. I remember seeing yeah. Fading Suns miniatures. They're really nice. Yeah. You can find the old stuff. Yeah. Or scan them and print them. <laughs> or papercraft. Yeah. Oh, no. Really cool, interesting setting. And yeah. Set to rip it off. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. I don't think you'll ever <coughs> find me uh, calling you out and ripping something off. <laughs> oh, they haven't seen season two yet. Oh, definitely. You saw original. They don't know the secrets of season two, episode one. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Okay. So, those are our players in the faction turns, and I guess we can roughly go over about what happened. So each faction turn is roughly a month, yep. and seven represents the seven months that, se that took place over season one. So yeah, Peter, what happened in, uh, what happened in turn one? Okay. Um, so turn one, everyone started pursuing their starting goals. Basically, the Praetorian Republic wanted to lock down the system. So they moved their capital fleet, the will of the people, into <laughs> Ponular along with their space marines. Eden decided to be bold and they sent out a strike fleet to NVIDIA to try taking that planet out. Then the Cult of Jolly just decided, hey, we're gonna accrue as much money as we can and be hedonistic eventually. Uh, Ayun moved their supernova mag riders, their graft formation, to Jotunheim to start claiming it. Then the NVIDIA party decided to attack Eden Strike Fleet that was on their planet now, and uh, using their anti, anti priest on, of NVIDIA, their demagogue, they managed to destroy it in one fell swoop. So I'm pretty sure that anti priest of NVIDIA will never show up again. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. And then the Jotunheim rebels decided to attack the Graf tanks, but they got curb stomped by the um, you know, the counterattacks. Because each time uh, acid attacks, if they fail, they get counterattack. And Graf tanks have really good counterattacks, so basically zealots committed suicide and they also were defeated. Because whenever zealots attack, they do damage to themselves and they dealt enough damage to destroy themselves during the attack, but they accomplished nothing. So. Suicide bombers against the graph tanks, I suppose. They didn't go well. Womp womp. And that was the first turn. Okay, in the second turn, which was around episode 3 as I was trying to keep track of the time passing, um, the, Praetorian, the Praetorian Republic started to establish its base of influence on Ponular. Um, Ayun was attacking the Jotunheim rebels and didn't go anywhere, really, it was stalemate. The NVIDIA pirates got themselves some covered shipping so they could attack Eden themselves. And Jotunheim rebels decided, hey, we don't have much to defend, we'll let's buy some militia units. And that was the quiet turn too. Yeah, some of these turns are a little quiet, listeners, because the yeah. various factions are gathering. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you have like, oh, I move my assets, I get some money, or I prepare, then there's not much happening. Mm -hmm. That's why we're aggregating everything into one episode. Yeah, that's why they, these don't make for very interesting singular episodes. Yeah. Because, hey, you do not to listen to us going, hey, let's do this live, because without visuals, it is really boring. Okay. Um, faction number three. It was around episode five. 
So, uh, the Praetorian Republic managed to seize Ponyol, they started their base of influence there, and all that good stuff. Uh, Eden bought themselves a new strike fleet. The cult of Jolius decided to spend like 23 or something like that faction credits to throw themselves the biggest orgy in history, basically, to accomplish their goal. Um, Ayun um, still was fighting the Jotunheim rebels. They managed to attack their base of influence, so they're getting really down to metal. The NVIDIA pirates decided, hey, let's be bold, and they moved their anti priest of NVIDIA to Eden. But oh no, those Eden people were so easy to defeat this time. Like, you know, why don't we take the battle to them? And the Jotunheim rebels launch a desperate attack and, lo and lose all of their remaining un units against the Graftak formation. So, yeah, they're basically defenseless on their planet. Uh, no, no one's going to be doing really well against Graft tanks. Nope. Those things are really good. It seems that belief falls short of steel and <laughs> steel and gravity. <laughs> we don't believe in gravity. We fly. Well, what's that line? Um, a gun and a good intention. A, a gun and a good intention will get you farther than a good intention alone. Probably. <laughs> or something. I butchered that, but it's something along those lines. Yeah. Okay. So that was. Episode 3. Now, uh, Faction Turn 3. Now, Faction Turn 4, which is Episode 6. So, by that point, the party have discovered Monochromicon and what have you. Ah, so, yes, the planet. Yeah, so the Praetorian Republic decided to move their, uh, mm, their Space Marines to Monochromicon to seize that. Then Eden, at the same time, decided to attack the anti-priest of his NVIDIA and they managed to kill him with commodities brokers and a strike fleet. That poor guy. Womp womp. Yeah. Turns out that you can't just win a battle with just one unit, even if it's a good one. Mm. Then the Cult of Julius decided, hey, Eden is trying to attack us, guys. We should shape up and, you know, go to space. So they bought a laboratory to allow themselves to buy Tech 4 units from them, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to do much. They finally began to assimilate. Yeah, they went to the stars and joined the Federation. So, in this turn, Ayun decided to uh, give a decisive blow to the Jotunheim rebels, and that's the end of the faction. And Ayun was the first faction to actually level up and buy themselves a higher attribute. Hmm. Good on them. Because when you blood the enemy, then destroy the faction, seize the planet, and so on, then that starts accruing over time. Right. Yeah. And, well, in the party decided, okay, this didn't work out, let's buy ourselves a party machine. Which, that finished uh, turn four. Turn five, it's still episode six. And we've got the Praetorian Republic finished seizing Ponyola because it's a longer process. Right. Then they bought the base of influence on Monochromicon to start establishing themselves. And they got a free planetary defense on there because, hey, there was an installation there, the party managed to free it, therefore the yep. party influenced the faction turn. Exactly. The fiction of the game uh, adds things to the faction system because the faction system only exists to service the fiction that the players run through. The faction system isn't important. It provides material for the players, and the players will provide material for it. Yep. So Eden decided that, hey, maybe say something more covert first to establish their forces on NVIDIA will be better. So they send their psychic assassin or stealth unit. So they're still sitting there on that planet waiting to kill something. They've got the Cult of Joy. You decide to build their first strike fleet with their laboratories and all, churning out those spaceships. Um, Ion bought a base of influence on Jotunheim, and the Vidya parent um, decided to uh, make an alliance with Solarius, with the Cult of Jolius, and they moved their seditionists to Solarius, so they'd be able to establish a base of influence there. Because, um, I guess in fiction, we... Uh, okay, how to put it? We wanted the 
NVIDIA Pirates to first start off on NVIDIA raiding the place. Mm -hmm. But then since he didn't attack, then NVIDIA, the old priest there, would be supporting Eden coming in and kicking Solarius out of the Cool of Jodos because they hate those guys. So they want to get rid of those pirates. At the same time, the Cult of Jolius, which was antagonistic to the pirates to start with, would figure out, hey, someone's trying to attack us, maybe let's keep those pirates with us, and maybe let's you know get together for now so they repel those people with spaceships, because hey, we don't have spaceships yet. The pirates have spaceships, so let's harbor them for now. So they decided to switch some allegiance there. And yeah, that's why the pirates was my, were, did manage to go to Solaris unmolested and start establishing themselves there. Okay, and that was the turn five. Now, turn six, which is around where the first episode starts, timeline wise at least. Um, the Praetorian Republic managed to seize Monochromicon, then Eden move their strike fleet to NVIDIA to try attacking something. Cult of Jolius move their strike fleet and mercenaries to NVIDIA as well to try securing it, more so, to bolster the defenses there. Uh, Ion sees Jodunheim and NVIDIA Paris manage to destroy Eden's strike fleet with their party machine on NVIDIA. So the attack went nowhere. Yeah, it's kind of hard to attack a planet that's heavily fortified with multiple units. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, they're hoping that, hey, maybe if they survive one turn, they'll be able to attack with the strike fleet and the assaults at the same time and manage to do something. But it didn't go well. Because, yeah, that's how faction turns order themselves at this turn. <coughs> so, then we've got turn seven. Which is the last turn we we did for now, which was around timeline around episode two of the second season. So we had the Praetorian Republic buy some more space marines for themselves, because that's great. You know those units are really mobile and whatnot. He then decided, hey, let's buy some venture capital for themselves. Jolius bought a party machine. Ion also bought a party machine. Nvidia Pirates establish a base of influence on uh, Solarius. And now the Cult of the Fading Sun finally comes into picture with doing something. Because for the last half a year, they've just been buying stealth assets, buying stealth assets, more stealth assets, Cyber Ninjas, Psyche Assassins, and all that stuff. And finally, they had enough so they can complete their, their goal of infiltrating the enemy. So they took their like stealth assets and move them to Jotunheim, and Eden, and Ponilar, and the Ayun. So they send out the Demagogues, Psycho Assassins, and multiple Cyber Ninjas, and they're getting ready to strike in the next turn. But that's what they do. Hmm, and yeah, it looks like conflict's really building up because we have... Um, who is building up in power right now who hasn't done anything? It was the Praetorian Republic, right? The Praetorian Republic, They've yeah. just been gathering resources. Yeah, they've been uh, locking down the systems they have because we didn't really want to do write up anything tiny to put on Ponyla that they just crash over. So it's like, eh, that's not a faction. They just go in, build a base of influence. Then Monochromicon appears. They had to go in there, build a base of influence to lock it down. So that took a lot of their time and effort because moving assets takes a lot of time. Buying base of influence takes a lot of time and money. So yeah, only recently did they manage to finish doing their busy work and will be able to do something. Similarly, the Cult of Jolius only recently started going to space and been preparing themselves to actually do something bigger in the system. At the moment, they were only able to fortify themselves against any possible attack, but nobody wants to attack them because they've got lots of assets there and so on and so on. Yeah, they're pretty well defended. Yeah, and what else? Um, the Ion Military Consortium finally fi finished dealing with Yotunheim Rebels, so now they'll be able to start looking into something more than just locking down the system, which took them a while. So yeah, it looks that next turn there'll be more conflict, more battle going on. I hope it'll flow into episode 3 of season 2, maybe later, 
This will be yeah. happening. Yeah, we've already done another faction turn that we're not going to talk about here, just because it happens yeah. after, and actually, episode, uh, contents that happen, contents, events that play out in the most recently recorded episode influence the faction turn, and is influenced by these preceding faction turns. Yep. Yeah. So it's all starting to tie together in Season 2 as we kind of figure out the, the kind of pace and the tempo we want to do with how faction turns and the fiction of the game play together. Yep. Yeah. So probably from now on we'll be including the faction turns into the start of the episode, maybe end of the episode. Yeah. As they happen, as the time goes on. Like these seven turns only took up 20 minutes, so there's not going to be like their own individual episodes, listeners. There's not quite a point to it. Maybe we'll do a recap at the end of the season just uh, in case someone wants to sift through our talk about what happened in the faction turn in bulk. But yeah. You know, we'll see. If you want that, listeners, you should uh, reach out to us on one of our social medias and be like, I want that. Maybe on Reddit, Twitter, I don't know. I'm not saying to like, share, and subscribe. Don't you ever said I said that, listeners. Don't you ever. Make sure to click that bell icon to be notified. <laughs> Is there a bell icon? Uh, on YouTube. Are we on YouTube? No, I don't think so, because no, all the music. On... Yeah, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. Jesus, H, Lord. Yeah, don't like, share, and subscribe, but definitely send a message if you want us to talk about faction turns. Probably Twitter. Or, uh, yeah, no pro Reddit also. I don't know. You'll figure it out, listeners. You seem like you're smart people. <laughs> All right. So, I was Devin. And Peter. And this is Sponsored by Nobody. Signing off.